Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Scott Grizzard. This is the uh, 14th of October, and we are on uh, both uh, Twitch and at Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Uh, you can ask questions either the place. Please remember the ones in Twitch are public. Um, uh, the Any questions? Okay. Um, so let's look at this quiz. This is quiz 8A. Um, and it's about linearization. And yes, as someone brought up that the title is from an old uh, Rafferty song. All right, so let's see here. We need a little ruler here because the first thing asks us to draw the tangent lines. So note that these are the lines um, tangent to the graph at x equals 1 and x equals 8. Uh, some people have argued that this should be an A. Okay. Um, I don't think so, but okay. Either way. So the line's tangent to that graph. Okay, so we've got one line here. Oops. And I set up the line to be perfect, and then, of course, that, that thing pops up again. Um, so now my line's off. So it's about... Oh, stop it. It's about there-ish. All right, well, it's not perfectly tangent. Stop. Now it's better. And we got another one that's about there. So how do we feel about our tangent lines 1 to 5? Okay. Compute f prime of zero. Let's get rid of the ruler. I'm sorry, f prime of x. So we've got, okay, d, so f prime of x is going to equal d over dx of x to the one third, which equals one third x to the two to the one third minus one which equals one-third x to the negative two over three. Okay. And then if you want, you can. Um, usually I don't simplify. Um, you don't have to here. But seeing as I'm about to plug in eight here, I might go ahead and do something like this. One over three x to the 2 over 3. So I might deal with that negative. I might put the thing on the bottom. I would not put this back in cube root of x squared form. Um, I would leave it as a fraction. Uh, but I would. I probably would move it to the bottom. But again, not required. Um, uh, but I know I'm about to plug in. Okay, that should be a better N. Um. All right, so one to five, how do we feel about that? Why did it do that again? I hate Blackboard. How do we feel one to five about that particular, uh, particular derivative? Uh, it's a simple, not easy, but simple derivative. Um, kind of thing. I just want to take the derivative. All right, now I'm going to use my work in part B to find this. Now, nowhere on here have I been asked to say what the, um, what the, um, what the, uh, um, 
uh, linearization is. So I haven't been required to write the definition of the linearization yet. Well, by goodness, if I haven't been required to write it, I'm going to do it now. So I'm going to do LFA of X equals, uh, if I do this, can you all see it? Yeah. So I'm going to write it out. So I'm going to do LF of A And I'm going to do, um, uh, that's f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. I'm going to write that down because I'm about to use it. So lf of 1, lf of 1 of x, lf 1 of x is going to equal f of 1 plus f prime of 1 times x minus 1. And now I'm just going to plug in the value. So the f here, by the way, is the cube root of x that was written here. It's kind of a little piece of key information. And this should not be in green because green is optional stuff. This should be in purple because it's required. Um, and then what I'm going to write is... Uh, let's see, so f, this is the cube root of 1, which is going to be convenient, plus uh, f prime of 1, so that is 1 over 3 times 1 to the 2 over 3. Uh, do, 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 times the quantity x minus 1. That's going to give me 1 plus 1 third, because that's 1, times x minus 1. Same thing for part D. I'm going to get the exact same thing, except I'm using 8 as my base point. So that's going to be f of 8 plus f prime of 8 times x minus 8. And that's going to give me the cube root of 8. So that's uh, 8 to the 1 third plus 1 over 3 times 8 to the 2 thirds times x minus 8. Now, 8 to the 1 third. Remember, 8 equals 2 times 2 times 2. So what I want is 1 third of the 2-ness. That's 2. And down here, I want 2 thirds of the 2-ness. That's going to be 4. Oops. So I'm going to get 8 to the 1 third. I want 1 third of the 2 ness is 2, plus 1 over 8 to the 2 thirds is going to be times 4. I've got an x minus 8 here. Now, I'm actually going to leave this as 1 third, 3, 1 over 3 times 4. Um, some people might not like that. Um, but the reason I am is because I know I'm about to plug in estimators. And look at this 4 here. When I plug in that 4, I might have some cancellation. So I'm just going to leave it. Okay. Um, that's a perfectly good answer. Uh, just because I think things might cancel when I start computing things. So 1 to 5, how do we feel about creating those linearization functions? Um, so this would be parts uh, C and D. And are there any questions about that? There's usually a lot of questions about this. Why, why am I doing this? Right? This is the tangent line based at 1. And this right here is the tangent line based at 0. I'm sorry, based at 8. So, yes, it is okay to factor it out more. It is okay to simplify the functions. 
uh, multiply them out. That's all valid. I tend to not, and here's why. Look at this x minus 8 here. If I'm estimating something like 4, right, this x minus 8, you see this 3 and this 4 here? When I do 4 minus 1, I'm going to wind up with a third. Those are going to cancel. Now, when I have a 4 here, I'm going to wind up with a negative 4, and those are going to cancel. So there's nothing wrong with multiplying them out, but it didn't ask you to. So, and, and, and this is one of the things that comes with experience doing it, you know, and, and I, you know, it's like that trick that I did when I had um, the baseball question, you remember, um, in class that I did, I, I did that one question where I had the, the square root of 90, um, and the square root of, I'm sorry, I had 90 squared and 45 squared, and I knew I was going to be taking a square root. Um, I kind of looked at that and said, wait a minute, there's a lot of 45s going on here. In the same way, I'm kind of like, wait a minute, I, I don't, I'm, I'm just saying uh, things might cancel in the end. Um, so that's why I don't multiply things out. One, I you can get mistakes. Um, and two, you know, a lot of times the math of these things works out right if you don't multiply them out. Now, there are times you do, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying that sometimes um, sometimes you get lucky on these things. Um, so, you know, if you want to sit there with a the calculator and punch every number in the calculator, sure, you can do that. It eats time on the test. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that, you know, there's sometimes you can get a little clever with these. Um Okay, so, so as a general rule, I don't multiply things out until it looks like I need to. Um, I think that, I hope that answered your question. Um, all right, so episode, well, it depends what type of error you get. Because if, you, if your tendency is to do copy errors, maybe you want the simplified form. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 4 in for x here. And I'm going to get the following. So LF1 of 4. And that's going to equal this, right? So this piece right here. So 1 plus 1 third 4 minus 1. Those 3s are going to cancel. That's going to be nice. So 1 plus 1 third 3. That's convenient. And so I wind up with 1 plus 1, which this week is 2, I think. And if we look at the graph, this estimator is at about 2. Right there. Look at it. So if I go to 4 and I use this lighter purple estimator, I wind up with 2. I'll even label these. This one here is LF1. LF1 of X. And this one here is LF8 of X. So I've got the tangent line centered at 1, and I have the tangent line, um, the line tangent at 8. Okay. And I do it again, but with the other number. So LF8 of 4, which is going to be this Y here. So that was this Y. That's this Y here. Um... One plus, uh, oh, no, two. I'm using the wrong function. Two plus one third times four. X minus uh, eight. Eight. X is four here. Equals. Now, when I do this math here, I'm going to get one plus one over three times four times. This is negative four. Well, that's kind of nice because those fours are going to cancel for me. 
Bloop, bloop. And I wind up with 2 plus uh, minus, because that negative is there. And I wind up with 2 minus 1 over 3. And uh, 2 minus a third. That's, um, I don't want to do 1 and 2 thirds, right? I want to do uh, 5, thir uh, five thirds. Did I do that right in my head? Yeah, this would be six, that'd be five, yeah. I always mess up math when I do it in my head. Yeah, so x is four. So what I'm doing is I'm using these two lines to make estimates of f at four, or at three, yeah, at four. So I'm using these, this, this point right here. If I zoom in here, this point right here, that y value, so this is 4, comma, L, F, 1 of 4. And this point here, if I zoom in, if I zoom in, I need like a finer pen, don't I? This point right here, oops. is 4 L F 8 of 4. Right, so the x value comes 4 for both of them, and the y values that I'm using for my estimators come from these two estimator functions. All right. So 1 to 5, how do we feel about that bit? Let me come back here, stop that. This is parts E and F. So one to five, how do we feel about that? Okay, there seems to be, some people are giving me ones and twos, um, which I'm fine with, but please ask the question. Yes, so a common mistake is to put the cube root of four in for X, and it's not, all right? You're plugging in four, and that, that's it's okay to make that mistake. You just plug in the x value, because what you want are these points here. And remember, the original impetus was this, was efficiency, right? If I'm, if I'm doing a complicated, um, if I'm doing something really complicated on a uh, video game, right, where I have to, where, where my, my graphics processor has to, to, to measure the, 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 the particles of an explosion, right? These things are all kind of weird quadratic equate, you know, these, these, the thing goes boom, right? And all these little particles come down and I need to compute all these little carbon particles, all right? So instead of using the cube root function, right? Because the particles are all kind of close to something, Instead of using a cube root function, I might use a um, a, um, a a linearization of the cube root function. You also see this a lot in economics, where the the data is a little fuzzy, right? I've got this kind of cost function, um, and I've got um, I've got this kind. Of, I think that the costs are like you know some kind of constant to a negative to whatever. But the point is that I'm not usually changing over a large period. I'm talking about small changes, right? I'm talking about, uh, should we ship another two million, you know, another 1,000 units, right? And and I, currently I'm shipping 20,000 units. And so I have this estimator of the, of, the, of the cost curve. I think it's gonna cost me, you know, something like the cube root as you go on. And, and the cube root's nice, you know, you get diminishing marginal return, I'm sorry, diminishing marginal cost. Um, in this situation, right? It's concave down. Um, but, you know, economics is fuzzy, right? So I've got, I think it looks like this. But, you know, if I just use the linearization, we get a close enough estimate to make a decision. You know, we, we're not we're not looking, right? Uh, economics has been called the laser-guided shotgun, right? I mean, you've got this very precise number over something that is never going to be that precise. 
Um, so this is a common trick, and it's common in statistics too. You'll see a lot of these things like the regression curve. Let's just assume it was a line. You know, we'll do a little least squares. Let's just assume so. We, we, we might, you know, um, you know, we think the relationships, you know, the, the, the area over which we want to talk about the relationship, eh, line's close enough for government work. A lot of times it is government work, by the way. You're sitting there justifying a stadium to, you know, your whole job is to just as an account. No, don't get me started. I, I, I spent a long time, uh, too much of my life working as an economist. Uh, that's my first master's degree. Okay. So these are our estimators. Now notice here that if I plugged it into my calculator, I'm not asking you to, but Without plugging through it, would my estimates be over or under estimates? Well, they are over estimates. Uh, this needs to not be in that color. It needs to be in this. These are over estimates. Because the tangent lines run above the curve, which, by the way, is the definition, if you watched the last video already, uh, the curve is concave down. All right, so let's talk about the common mistakes. Don't put in the cube root of four. Don't, the, the whole point of this is not to use a calculator. All right. Um, right. So we know X is four because that's F of four, right? If I had said estimate, what are we estimating? We are estimating F of four. Okay, so the cube root of four is f of four, and that's a common mistake. So, so make sure you might actually want to write that. We are estimating f of four. Yeah, we're estimating cube root of four, which equals f of four. All right, so we're going to plug in four. Um, Okay, um, and the book goes over that too, but that's the idea, the big idea. Um, and sometimes, I'm, I'm going to get off on a little rant here, sometimes we only have the lines, okay? So uh, sometimes when we're estimating a curve in real life or in economics, which I guess is sort of close to real life, depending on which economic theory you're using to justify your stadium, right? If you're justifying a stadium using economic theory, you use Keynesian multipliers that you know, right? Because the, the, the state has a requirement that you justify all of these things by doing an economic impact uh, study. And of course, the, the people that get hired for the firms are lying through their teeth, right? They know that the models they're using are stupid, right? The, these models date from, you know, the 30s. They, they, they've been discredited since the 60s, yet they give the, the number, right? Oh, it's going to generate economic activity of 5 billion. No, it's not. They know it's not, right? They're just, you know, they're, they're being hired to be experts and they're picking the model that will give them the multiplier that will justify the stadium because they're being hired by people who want to build the stadium, right? So if you're reading an economic impact statement that's being written by that's being hired by the county or the city or the company that wants to build the thing, right? Because the politicians want the project, right? They don't want to actually have the truth. What they want is a, is a, is a number to put into their PowerPoint presentation that justifies the existence of the project. So they use these models that are stupid. Sorry, off on a rant. But it's really soul-sucking work. But... A lot of times, if I'm doing real economics, if I'm doing economics where I actually want to know information, a lot of times what I have are these curves, right? I, I know what's going on around eight, and I'm assuming it's linear, and I know what's going on around one, and I'm assuming it's linear, and then what I'm going to do is kind of make a bunch of curves and kind of get at what the function was initially. 
So there are a lot of situations where what we're dealing with is linearization. And, and, and there are a lot of situations in science where you deal with that just because the computation is easier. All right. Um, okay. The concave down part. So if you, if you remember from the last lecture, there's a definition of concave down. Right, so this was the last thing I did, and it's going to be kind of one of the main themes of, uh, of um, the third module. Okay, so f is concave down at x equals a. If there is some neighbor, oh, that's an awful way to put that. If for all x near a, and a, but, you know, um, uh, actually, I don't need the and a because this is not a property that could happen at a discontinuous function. If for every x near a, f of x is less than or equal to L of f a times x, right? That's the definition of concavity, uh, of concave down. So as you can see here on this graph here, right, here's a, now here's, if I go a little bit over, this graph is concave down. If I go a little over, here's f of, of whatever this is. So we'll call this point x naught. So example, here, f of, oops, what did I do? Somehow I just changed the color of this and I didn't want to. If anyone knows of a tablet that's easier to write on, I am all ears, by the way. Someone could sell me that. I don't understand why every company on earth is not, you know, well, not every company. I don't understand why tablet makers aren't selling that. There is one called The Remarkable. I've looked it up, um, but it doesn't let you, well, it sort of does, but it doesn't really let you project well uh, to another computer to stream. So if someone comes up with one that's easier to write on, I am all ears. So here, f of x naught is less than or equal to, it's strictly less than, f of a x naught, right? Because here's f of x naught here. And here is l f a of x naught, right? The line runs over the curve. The curve would always give me an overestimator. Um, right now, uh, I have a I have the uh, Windows Surface Pro. I have one of the older ones, um, and it um, it does. I like the fact that it's a real computer, but it, it's hard to write on. And the, the 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 pin, the dot that forms, is always just a little bit off the pin. Uh, yeah. So people have said iPad. I don't know if iPad will run OneNote. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have to, um, my brother has one. I'll, I'll have to borrow his and play with it some more. Uh, the one thing I hate about the iPad is you have to choose the eraser tool. I hate that. The one thing I love about the Windows is when I turn this upside down, it erases. Um, uh, that is the one thing that drives me nuts about the iPad. As you can't just turn the pin over and erase. Um... So how do we feel about this idea? One to five. Yeah, so you double tap the pencil and all this other stuff and, oh, okay. I didn't know you could just double tap it. I'll have to look at that then. I really like the fact that I on the windows I could turn it over. So uh, let's do question one part. What is this? Uh, let me go back. Question one part G. I am talking way too much. Well, that's okay. And again, this idea of concavity is for the next module, okay? So we are going to spend it, but it's one of the things that we get from this idea of linearization, okay? If I've got a differential function, I can define what it means for concavity by simply running the tangent lines. Um, 
And we'll get into that. That's a formal definition of something. Right, so it always overestimates because the lines, the tangent lines, which are the functions for linearization, run above the curve. All right, so we have another one of these graph problems. I haven't asked you one in a while. The grader that does the graphs has been yelling at me about it. You know, she's like, I want more graphs. You don't understand. I'm in analysis. I need graphs. It's therapy. Um, analysis, by the way, is this course, which is designed to take people who have never hit the wall in math and slam their head against the wall. Just go, boom, boom, boom. Uh, that's intermediate analysis. All things you have to look forward to if you're a math major. Um, okay, so f of 4 equals 1. I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there. f of negative 2 equals negative 2. f prime of negative 2 equals 1. Okay, so I know slope needs to be 1. f of 1 needs to be defined, okay? f prime of 1 does not exist. And if x is greater than 1, then f prime of x is less than 0. So this means I'm de decreasing. Right, I want all the tangent lines to be downward sloping. So if x is greater than 1, f prime of x is going down. Okay, so 1 to 5, how do we feel uh, about the conditions? If someone's asking me the questions that you always hate to ask. Okay, will there be a graph like this one on the exam? Am I asking you these questions on quizzes for my own edification? Because I like graphs, right? I mean, yes, I do. But, you know, I like them so much that when I was writing the exams, they always appeared, right? Um, but these are actually really good questions. They're questions that are hard to do on WebAssign. So, you know, we like them. We like them as test questions. Um, in general, for some reason, the thing's flickering. I don't know why. Uh, so I, I can't guarantee you a graph because I didn't write the test this time. But this is kind of a common question to be asked. Okay. And there's one on the, the bootleg. There's one on the practice test. Okay. So what I need to do here. So one to five, how do we feel about the, let's see, multiple choice. So uh, what the conditions mean. All right, so stop, start. All right. So I need a slope of one here. Well, the easiest way to do that is this. Stick a little ruler, but by the way, you're, you're, I think I've mentioned this before, but if you're looking for a way to do this on a test, your student ID is the best straight edge you can find. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something like this. All right, now, I have this condition here where I need it to go down. Well, the easiest way to make it go down is to draw a nice little straight line. I need f of 1 to be defined right there is just fine. And I need it to go down forever. All right, now that that's taken care of, I'll just, you know, fill in the rest of it. I don't have to make it continuous. I'm just doing it because why not? Uh, there's no restrictions kind of here. I don't care. Oops. All 
All right, I'm going to write the word kinky here. Um, don't mean to violate the vertical line test there. Kind of am. Oops. Uh, all right, well, I don't care. It doesn't have to be that straight. There we go. All right. And then I check my conditions. F of 1 equals 4. F of 4 equals 1, I'm sorry. F of 4 equals 1, check. Uh, let me do the checks in a different color. Uh, F of negative 2 equals negative 2, check. The slope at negative 2 is 1. F prime of negative 2 is 1, yep. Uh, f of 1 is defined. Yep, it's right there. F prime of 1 doesn't exist. Correct. We got a kink. And if x is greater than 1, f prime of x is less than 0. Decreasing, yes. All right. All right, so graph 1 to 5. Now, the last one doesn't say f prime of x equals 0. The last one says that f prime of x is less than 0. Um, I can see how you could confuse that. That would have been just a flat line, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, so when the derivative doesn't exist, you either need a jump. You could have done a discontinuity, right? A discontinuity would have done this. Probably when I do the 5 p.m., I'll do something a little different because, you know, I like to do two different things. Um, um, and I've also looked, by the way, on the YouTube stats. If people aren't watching the test review videos very much. I don't know if you guys are watching them on Twitch instead. Uh, which is great. Um, I, I haven't looked at the, the, the Twitch stats for um, uh, watching of the videos. But make sure that you watch the quiz review videos. Um, and it's usually a good idea if you attend one of the classes to watch the video from the other one on the quiz reviews. I know some of them are kind of boring and they're long. But um, Uh, can't have a line with a slope of of 1 at x equals negative 2 at a different point at negative 2? Um, no, you can't, because that would violate the vertical line test. Uh, it's a good question, though. But you remember that vertical line test? Which I should be doing all, all the checks, right? I need to check my vertical line test. So I take my ruler and I go, nope, 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 nope. Well, maybe there. No one would be that picky. Nope, 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 right? I haven't defined, in no place have I defined uh, two y's for the same x. It's a good question. Anything else? Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to stop the stream.